in the repair shop today. It's man versus metal. As Dom joins forces with one of Britain's last remaining master coopers. I'm going to teach you how to do it the old fashioned right. way. Hit it. And master saddle maker Susie works on an A list antique. Oh, it's fantastic. Nice bit of history and a famous maker and everything. Oh, I, it's a complete honour. Absolute honour. It's a sunny, lovely day. See now this. Oh, it's just life, isn't it? No work. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, no work. Oh, hello. Hi. How are we doing? Well, hello. Hi. I'm Jay. Hi, Ron. I'm Phyllis. Hi. So what have you got for us? We have a watch. Steve, sounds like a job for you. Okay. Right? Yeah, come on. This in you OK, come. thank you. OK, thank you very much. Having seen the repair shop at home in the Netherlands, Ron Schemmering and his wife, Toos, have travelled over 300 miles in search of horologist Steve's expertise. Oh. This is the watch, and it was a watch of my grandfather and my grandmother. And this is what you would call the Albert chain. Yes. And this is my grandmother. OK. They were living in Indonesia before the war. After the Japanese invaded uh, Indonesia in the Second World War, yeah. they were both arrested and sent to the prisoners of war camp. Oh, right. Yeah. My grandfather was taken to the Burma Railway to work there, and my grandmother was taken to a women's camp on Sumatra. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, fleeing from, from your house and being arrested, the only thing she could take with her was this watch. So she sewed it in her clothes, and it stayed there as long as she was in the prisoner of war camp. How long was she in the prison? How long Four was she? Four years. Four years? She sewed that in there? In wow. her dress, yeah. I know items like this were traded as currency. For food. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And not only would she be hiding this from the guards, but hiding it from, from the other interned people yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. so this means a huge amount yeah. to you. Is. There is no family history except a watch. This is yeah. it. So that's the only this is it. So um, after my grandmother uh, passed away in 1964, uh, my father got it. Uh, my father passed away five years ago. Right. So now it's now it's, no, it's uh, past uh, a year. Yeah. How well did you know your grandparents? Well, I was five or six when my grandmother passed away. So I, I know her as the lady in the chair with the uh, with smoking her cigarettes. <laughs> uh, Have you ever seen it work? Has it ever been? No, no, no. I never seen it work because when I got it from my father, it was in this state. Right. The hands are missing. The glass is missing. The case is slightly dented, isn't it? Yeah. I'm looking at this and thinking, I don't want to do it up too much. Mm -hmm. It has to keep its provenance. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There's always will stay in the family. Yeah. We, we don't have children, but uh, I have a, a nephew uh, who is, who is yeah, crazy about family things, oh, and right. it will go to him. Ron must now return to Holland, taking the chain with his grandmother's picture with him, but leaving the treasured watch at the repair shop with Steve. It's the only thing left from my grandmother and the, the time before 1945. I went to England for this guy, so I'm sure he can fix it. So uh, I'm excited. This is a really amazing watch, and it's even more amazing considering the history that it's had. The fact that it was sewn into a dress uh, for four years in a prison of war camp, I think it's really surprising that it's actually survived in this state. A watch this size calls for some serious magnification. It's got some dings in the case. The mechanism is fairly gunged up, actually. It certainly needs a jolly good clean through. Whenever you get that eye out, you know I want to have a go. <laughs> <laughs> How can I have a look at what you're seeing? There you go. Thank you. Oh, wow. So can you see why it's not working? There, there is power getting through there, so I think with just a, a good overhaul, maybe some work to the escapement. So will all of that, see that this kind of dirt mark yeah. around there, that will go then, yeah? S some of it will, some not of it. all of it. OK. Well, because we want to leave some of the history. Yeah, and have a little hand in the middle? Yep, straighten these hands up, yeah. put a second's hand on. And it really gives me great satisfaction to, to 
actually take a clock or a watch that's important to somebody yeah. and you're keeping it alive, keeping it going for future generations. Yeah. You've got to have a passion or a love to do this type of work. It is absolutely a passion. You want to go the extra mile because you, you do go the extra mile. Assessment complete. Steve's made a decision. This watch is too small and too precious to work on in the repair shop barn. So he's taken it off site for specialist cleaning. I really need to um, strip it down to check and see what the problems are because the, these mechanisms are so fine that, that, that any dust that's, that's falling out of um, this old thatched barn um, could affect it. It really needs to be in that, that clean environment. Next, a rusty antiquity, which should feel right at home in the rural setting of the repair shop. All right. Oh, yeah. Carolyn and Carl have traveled over 200 miles from Derbyshire, bringing with them a much loved object from her old family farm. So, what do we have here then? Right, this is my grandmother's butter churn, which I inherited in about 2000. And it was originally in my granny's old house that I grew up in. And um, inside is the original paddles. And then also the big handle. My granny used to milk the cows in the morning and then we used to come in and I just remember pouring the milk in here and then I would turn it and make, and we'd make butter. I was fascinated by this. And I, I you know, at five years old, you can't really read you what it says. You can't quite work it out, yeah. It is quite fascinating and it's just lovely. It's beautiful. Lovely. So it's a champion churn used by the... I can't really read that. No. Can you read that? Champion butter makers. Butter makers. Of, of England and Scotland. Ah. Yeah. Right. Granny and Mummy moved to the, to the farm in about 1939, 38, 39, just before the war. Right. And obviously in the war we had to make our own butter. Yeah. And they would probably have made it just for the family or just for the people on the farm or just locals, I don't know. When do you think she last used it? Well, I remember using it probably the late... 60s, early 70s. What would it mean to you to have oh, this restored? It'd be amazing. It'd be a really, really amazing. It'd be like going back in time for me. But it, what it would really do would take me right back to me and my granny. And um, I'm very like my granny. And when I think about it, I get a bit sorry about that. But we were very close and she taught me an awful lot in life. And, and I just sort of would like to be a bit like her, really. I don't want to state the obvious, but what would you like us to do? <laughs> I would love you to get it working properly okay. and to actually looking like it would have done when it was made. And I think my whole family would just really appreciate it as well because I've got three children and it would be handed down to them. It would always stay in teach the family. Teach them how to use it. And too. I could yeah. teach them. Yeah. I think all the old ways are lost. You know, none of Absolutely. us know how to make no anything idea. anymore yeah. and it's all done for us and we can mm -hmm. buy it in the supermarket. It would be great to just be... And the old-fashioned way of doing it would be great. And I'm sure your granny would be really happy to see that you're taking care of it yeah. and keeping it in the family yeah, no. and keeping it on. This means a lot to Carolyn to, to have this back in the family. If I could pass it on to my children and give them the benefits that I had from my grandparents and my parents, then I think my life would be perfect. What do you reckon? I'm just quite concerned about these cracks going down the sides and yeah. cracks in the bottom. On the bottom and as holes. well. It's all the wood is... It's not very milk-proof or butter -proof, Not waterproof at all, no. no. See, it's, it's missing a strap general. here as well, which strap. is probably part of the reason why it's all started giving way. It's only once Dom has stripped the butter churn of all its metal work that he can see the extent of the job ahead. First thing we really need to do is to see if it's got any leaks. Uh, so I'm going to fill it up with some hot water and see, see what happens, basically. I'm just sloshing the water around inside just to try and... Yeah, you can see, look, it's leaking like a sieve. There's a... all around the bottom, all, all these joints. It's where the wood's dried up, where it's not been used for so many years. It's been sitting just, you know, all the, all the wood shrinks as it dries out, so... We need to rehydrate it uh, by, by submerging it in water and it should all swell up and hopefully seal up a lot of the gaps. To do that, we're gonna have to put it in this big barrel, fill that up with hot water and just leave it in there overnight.
Next to arrive at the repair shop, Tom Fister needs help with a well-traveled trunk. Yeah, bring it over. We'll put it on the uh, bench on there. The yeah. This is uh, one for Susie. Hello. Hello. I'm Tom. Lovely to meet you, Tom. You too. Oh, this is fantastic. The repair shop is becoming something of a family affair. Master saddle maker Susie is Steve's sister. Oh, this is lovely. What do we have here? My great-granddad's trunk. Really? That's right. The lettering on the side, HFP, stands for what? Oh, Henrico Frederico Fister. And what did he use it for? Well, he used to travel a lot. So, I mean, he went to India and all over the world. Why was he travelling so much? He was an expert in grain. Um, and he went to India to advise, I think, the Calcutta government or the Indian government on cotton. All really? sorts of stuff. I mean, he went Greece, Italy, Spain. So a well, well yeah, traveled I mean, all over the world. Case, he, so he went everywhere. Why we see all these dings and uh, yeah. scratches and yeah. whatnot? And uh, what maker case do we have? Oh, it's a Louis Vuitton. Really? Yeah, yeah, no. He was a wonderful case maker because people were beginning to travel a lot more, and so they started making cases for their specific type of travel. And some of them would have ironing boards in them or chests of drawers in them. Absolutely phenomenal. So each piece is fairly unique, but it was commissioned for that particular person and what, what their style of travel was. And it ended with my, one of my two, aunt, two great aunts. She gave this to me. I sort of found it in a pantry buried under saucepans. Oh. And did you know what it was then? Did you know? Well, she did say, oh, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> uh, <all right. laughs> These locks are pretty special. These are known as unpickable locks. Ooh, there's yeah. a challenge. Better not lose that. There's now, a challenge. Know. And everyone's slightly different. You wouldn't happen to have. I oh. actually found it. Look at that. Brilliant. Well, so we've got a spare handle here. We have it. Um, Oh, it's broken off here. Yeah. Do you have any idea how that happened? I do know exactly how that happened. Okay. Uh, my um, uh, my eldest son gave it a tug. We were moving house and he... Um, okay. And then he got shouted at. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you have an article like this and then you have the story of who it belonged to, it's a wonderful way of reminding future generations of your family who that person was. Yeah. The story all revolves around this case and it's a beautiful case. It's been in the family for... Oh, over a century now, so it means my son who ruined the handle can um, he can pass it on to his kids. It's a bit of history, isn't it? It is. It was always a bit nerve wracking thinking that, you know, as years go by, it's going to get into worse and worse state and be irreparable. I feel excited to see how it's going to come out. I mean, it's nice to see somebody who knows what they're doing who can repair it for me. This is a really nice piece, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Nice bit of history and, and famous maker and everything. Oh, I, it's a complete honour. Absolute honour. This actually looks thick leather. Yeah, it is thick. It's about three mil thick. Right. But you couldn't just have a case made of three mil of this size to go through everything it has to go through. It needs a frame, it needs, it needs right. a form. Yes. So it's, it's mounted onto wood and these studs go into the wood holding everything together. And then the handle, I'll be able to renovate that. We can reuse that. Oh, can you? Yeah. You, you don't have to make a new one altogether. No, um, but the keepers here that hold the handle in, they're going to have to be remade. Should we get over to your bench and uh, yeah. you can make a start? All right, that'd be fantastic. Ready? Thanks. Before Susie can begin restoring the case, it needs to be made safe to work on. The hinge holding the lid on has completely collapsed, so she needs to make a replacement using new leather. This is a really nice way to cut an equal strap all the way down instead of having to mark it with a ruler and then cut by hands. The gauge is holding the leather in place whilst I'm cutting. I've got to do a straight edge. Which is from, right, you, you lay your, uh, if I hold this up. Yeah, you right. want me to do my side? I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once it's on, it's on. And I'm now going to put some. Let's get some tacks in. I nod my head, you hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Yeah. 
The pedigree of this vintage drunk has piqued Jay's interest. So it's a Louis Vuitton case. Yeah. I ain't seen one of these. They don't sell something like this anymore, do they? No, you don't find them every day. They're, oh. they're fairly rare. So this here, that's, that's wood, isn't it? Yeah, it is wood. They would normally use pine or ash, something like that. All of the studs have, have the maker's name on. I do like this a lot. Yeah. This is nice. So what have you found out about him? Well, I found out that um, he was quite, uh, quite a workhorse. He started his life working around about 15 years of age when he left home at 13 yeah. and he walked for two years to Paris and he got a job you as... You said he walked? He walked and ended up in Paris and got himself a job as an apprentice box maker, went on to set up his own business and ended up getting a commission from um, Napoleon's wife. Oh. So that elevated his position. His and status then, yeah? Yeah. He moved yeah. up the ranks. He certainly did, okay. yeah. So if he was good enough to make a, a case for Napoleon's wife, then everybody would absolutely. want him. They'd be like, well, yeah. hold on a minute. Yeah. That was his guy? break. That was absolutely. Yeah. And then later, his son developed the, the Louis Vuitton logo and the brown with the gold LVs on it. Yeah, that yeah. was his son that developed oh. that. So you see cases with that on. And in today's world, you'll see that as well. Yeah. So this is the original, though, isn't it? Yeah. This is like, yeah. this is done by dad. Yeah. This is a wonderful piece. Back at his bench, Steve's resuming work on the pocket watch that had spent four years hidden in a dress in a World War II prisoner of war camp. He's now ready to rebuild the watch and has called upon Cindy Welland, a specialist dial restorer. I'm just tracing all of the numerals. So if anything disappears during the cleaning process, I've then got a two-scale replica of it. The most important thing is that we keep a, as much of it as original as possible, conserving it rather than restoring it. Give this a gentle clean. I'm going to use a diluted solvent. And if we're lucky, this discoloration will come off without causing too much damage to the numerals. Just takes time and being very gentle. I'm going to be quite lucky. The solvent is taking off the dirt and not taking off the ink that the numerals are painted with. They seem to be staying on quite well. Clean-up mission accomplished. As Steve begins the rebuild, Cindy must painstakingly hand-paint the numerals that measure mere microns across. I finished. Hey, fantastic. I'm quite happy with it now. The numerals stand out. That is really, really good. And the, the minute ring is just incredible. It was tricky. I think that is brilliant. You can still see some of the discoloration, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think because you haven't cleaned it, you know, all off and shone it up, I think that actually, you know, that's going to keep the integrity of the piece. I think they're going to be so pleased with this. I'm chuffed to bits with that, so Good. well done. Over at the metal workshop, Dom has been joined by Alistair Sims to help with the 160-year-old butter churn. Hey, you must be Alistair. Hiya, Dom. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank too. you for coming down. Not a problem. Come and have a look. Alistair is one of Britain's last remaining master coopers, skilled in the ancient trade of making casks, barrels and other containers out of steamed wood bound with metal, a craft that has been around since the Roman times. I think it looks really, really good. I think it looks watertight, I think. OK. So uh, I think what next thing to do is to make some hoops, which are the bands that fit on here, because yes. obviously you've got two missing. Yeah. So we've, we've got some hoop iron. We can make two new hoops to go on there. So it's 49 inches, piece of hoop, and then... Do you want me to just cut that off? Yeah. I've got the grinder. No, 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 no. I've got a grinder. I can't no, just no. chop it off with a cutting disc, no? No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm going to teach you how to do it the old-fashioned right. way. But with this... Yeah. Go on, then. I'm standing back here. <laughs> See, that's less noisy than your grinder. Yeah, that's impressive. It's a big old hammer, my God. There's three Lovely. sizes of Cooper's hammers. Apprentices is three and a half pound. Then there's a four and a half pound standard. This is more than that, no? Five and a half. That's the heaviest of them. What we're going to do, we can see where the hoop's been. And then what we do, we'll, we'll mark it. 
piece of chalk, and that's where the rivets are going to go. What size drill bit do you need? Don't need a drill bit. Just need the rivet and the hole in there, look. I mean, surely we need to drill a hole first. No, 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 no. Put that on there like that. OK. Hold it like that. Oh, my word. So now we know where that's going to go, we can trim the end off. I see, now that's set. Yeah, sure. So you've seen With it done, the chisel, you've, yeah, you've seen it done it. once. Hit it. Next job, to line them up and make sure that they're perfectly square. My God, that's great. That looks surprise strong, even with just one? Yeah. There's one more then. No, go on, you're going to do it. OK. Yeah. How's that look? It's better than your one. No? Yeah, I'll let you off. It probably is. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Alistair fits the hoop to the churn and eases it down over the barrel with accurate strikes of the hammer. It's been an education. I've learned so much from him, having a go at the rivets and just looking at his tools and the, the, the very, everything he's got is so specific and he's, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful working with him. A true, true craftsman. It's been really good fun. It's great, it's almost down, isn't it? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure working with you. You too. Steve's nearly finished putting the microscopic components of the war watch mechanism back together. I'm just putting the final, uh, more delicate parts in. Quite nervous about doing this, actually, because I find these jobs, doing such small jobs, quite difficult. I usually work on clocks, not watches, so uh, to do such an important watch um, is uh, quite pressurised. With the workings rebuilt, all that's left is to see if it ticks. I'm just going to pop a little bit of power on now and see how we get on. And hopefully, this is a sort of moment of truth. If the mechanism doesn't whir back into life, Steve will be back to square one. Ah, that's good. Really pleased. Really, really pleased. So that's really good because actually it means that there wasn't anything drastic wrong with the watch um, and, and it was just dirt and grime that's holding it up. I'm just going to pop the hands on there. Let these hands just push on friction tight. OK, we've got a slight problem. It's, it's um, stopped. Okay. Well, that's a relief. It was just the second's hand touching the dial. Thank goodness for that. The second's hand is actually attached to a very fine part of the mechanism, and the slightest bit of friction actually will stop the watch. So it's very important that that doesn't touch the dial. So very pleased that that's all it was. With the mechanism up and running, Steve can begin to fit the delicate watch back into its casing. The watch isn't the only project that's testing the repair shop team. Susie's trying to remove the studs that hold the torn handle onto the antique Louis Vuitton trunk. But they are proving a little stubborn. Are you having fun? Well, I'm a little stumped. Um, these upholstery studs are engraved with Louis Vuitton, so I want to be able to reuse them. The problem is it's not wanting to pull out, so right, okay. I'm, I'm getting yeah. the feeling the pin goes through and is possibly bent back oh, really? in the wood. Oh, my word. But I don't want to force anything. So if you can get some sort of claw or something or something to close onto it, mm -hmm. um, and then you can twist it maybe and see whether it, it'll come out. Um, obviously, I don't want to damage any of the leather around it, so... Do you want to use my little electric hand drill uh, with, a, with a dental piece on it? To, uh, oh, yeah. To, that, that yeah, if you've got something that will go in there. Yeah, that'll yeah. soon whisk okay. that off. Again, All right, that so, would be perfect. Um, Steve drills away the leather to try and uncover the stud posts so that Susie can work out how to remove them. Yeah, I think a little more here. I really want to expose whatever is in there. But to no avail. It's really stuck, yeah, isn't it's it? It's really, really, really. If, if I pull it any more, it's just going to destroy this.
Having had no luck prizing the studs from the front, Susie's attacking from the other side. In order to replace the handles on the outside, they're held on with the studs that go all the way through the wood and they're burred on the other side. I have to drill out the back of the stud and in order to get to the back of these studs, I've had to carefully take out all of the linen that lines the case, making sure that I don't damage that in the process because I'll be putting that back. Um, so it's a case of me getting inside the case to drill the back out. There we go. I use my handy dandy little magnet and I'm just going to remove these filings so you can see there is the original stud. After I've drilled out the rivets from the back, I have to release them from where they've lived for the last hundred years. I have two out already. I have another eight to remove. Just very gently getting behind it. This has ended up taking a lot more work than what I initially thought, but it's OK. You just keep peeling away, remembering somebody made this case so we can remake it. I'm just taking my time. You never want to rush it. You don't want to feel the pressure of time. Gently does it. Perfect. With the studs finally removed, Susie now has a clean surface to work with, so she can start bringing the leather back to life. This case has become very dry and like biscuity. It just literally wants to crumble away. So I'm just using a glycerin saddle soap, which will actually seal the finish, so there's no chance of anyone, when they rest their hand on it, pulling away the top layer of, of the, the leather here. And um, you, you can see it's, it's still, the dirt is just coming off. Susie's got hours of leather conditioning ahead of her. If she's going to get this Victorian trunk looking its best again. With the butter churn now watertight and bound by its hoops, Dom can begin work on the metal parts of the churning mechanism. They've been blasted, stripped, and now they're bare metal. And now we're going on with the paint, which is a super hard wearing, uh, like satin black finish. Next, the lettering. Whilst uh, taking the butter churn apart, there was evidence on all of these the, the, the cast items with text that they had remnants of, of yellow. So I've matched the yellow to this enamel paint and I'm just filling them back in. She's really fiddly. I heard there's some painting Ooh. going on here. You're right, Jay. How's yeah. it going? Are you breathing there? I'm kind of holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a steady hand, though. I'll give you that. Thank you. You're not shaking. Thank you, no. You know what I'm sitting here. You know I want to have a go, didn't you? Well, I haven't finished this one yet. It's got the biggest letters of, of all. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the end first. I always like working backwards. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good, that's no, good. Let... <sighs> breathe, you breathe, yeah, can't hold your breath. Don't shake, keep it steady. C, hold on, that C's not as good as your C. It looks more like a G now, doesn't it? Yeah, a bit of a block there. Oh, man, you know what, I was doing so well. I've got the champion yeah? going now. I could okay. go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, it's really good. Yeah? I'm impressed. No, you know what, that's hard. That's really hard. Oh, All right. Your help. No, you're welcome, sir. Pipe painted, polished, cleaned, replaced, uh, fixed the barrel, and it's now finally time to just bolt it all together. It's been a very long process to get everything to this point, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it uh, back in action. It's been a challenging repair for clockmaker Steve, working on the minute pocket watch, which had seen turbulent times in a World War II prison camp. There's the timekeeper. How are we doing, Steve? Yeah, good, thanks. Got all the mechanism done. It's ticking away beautifully. Look at that. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I need to look, sit through that. You do? It's that way, isn't it? Is it? No. Oh, it's that way. <laughs> Oh, wow. 
With the watch completed... Oh, look at that! Steve's now got the important mission of hand-delivering this valuable heirloom back to its owner. So, I've actually got to get going. Yeah. Happy Happy job, like. well done, yeah. Steve. Yep. Ron's 82-year-old mother is too frail to travel, so Steve has come all the way to the Netherlands. I'm really looking forward to seeing their reaction to it, working well and, and looking so great. And also just the thought that it's had the most amazing journey and this is just another part of it. I'm very excited at last to see the watch back. Everybody will be excited to see it restored in its original appearance. This watch is the only item connecting Ron to his ancestors. It survived the horrors of a prisoner of war camp, kept hidden by Ron's grandmother, sewn into her dress for four years. But the rigors of its journey had left the watch broken and battered. After surviving the war, it should be in one piece again. Eagerly anticipating the return of the watch is Ron's mother Katerina and his nephew Martin, who will eventually inherit the timepiece. Hey, hello, Hi. Stephen. Nice Hi. to see you. Come in. Thank you very much. This is my family. Hello. This is, um, this is a moment I've been looking forward to. Because oh, I know how much this watch means to you all. I am very excited for this moment. Oh, man, wow. that looks wow. great. And the movement is working. That's great. That's great. It's wonderful. Yeah, that's Thank really you. wonderful. Yes. You did a, a great job. Beautiful. This has been the most wonderful job to work on uh, because I, I knew what this meant to you and I know what a, an amazing history this watch has had. It's beautiful. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> Bless you. It looks great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. You did a beautiful job. Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy with you. And I'm sure my late husband will like that too. Thank you so much. To reunite the watch and the chain yeah. with grandmother. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. That looks That's great. Nice. That looks yeah. complete. Yeah. It's complete, isn't it? There's the picture of your grandmother. Yep. Got it. It's the end of, uh, of the road, isn't it? It's, uh... it's his memory for his grandmother. Yeah. Am I good? It's home again. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. It was an emotional moment for me because I loved my mother-in-law very, very much and I knew what a difficult time she had. I think this watch is a symbol of courage and, for us, very important. Back at the repair shop, Susie's nearly finished work on the designer case. There's just one finishing touch, something that all Louis Vuitton cases of the time would have had, an overstrap that secures the trunk. This is going to be the tab that goes through the buckle. I just nip off these corners and you point the end like this helps to feed it through. Susie uses an arsenal of specialist leatherwork tools to trim. Just put it on the edge there and run it gently along. Edge and crease the strap. Before sewing the two pieces together. Use my awl. And these are just surface marks. So the idea is to follow that angle and push it straight through. I'm using two needles. Bring the needles through. I go back one stitch before coming forward. Put the needle on top of the thread and draw it up. Finally, the challenge of making a new strap look like an antique. The strap needs to be distressed to blend with the age of the case. And gravel is wonderful for creating all sorts of 
scratches and indentations that will make it look like it's had a bit of a life. Yeah, it's coming up great. Liking that. This trunk traveled the world in the Victorian era, but those journeys had taken their toll. It was up to Susie to ensure it lasts another hundred years, so that owner Tom has a lasting legacy of his great-grandfather, Enrico. Hi, Tom. Hello. It's Big good to thing. see you again. Yeah, you too. Yeah, how are you? Nice how are you mate? You all right? I'm all right. I'm good. Yeah. What did it look like when you brought it in here, then? Oh, it was trolley. Yeah. Um, bits were falling off, is it? It was a little tired. It was, a, yeah, yeah. It, it, it seemed better days. You ready to see it? I, I certainly am. Just stand back. Oh, wow. Right. Amazing job. It didn't come in originally with its overstrap. No. So I was able to make a new strap and make it look like it had been around the world several times. Yeah, yeah. And then you remember the handle that side, which was broken. Oh, gosh, yeah, well done. And then the back, do you remember it was yeah, split yeah, yeah, all the way yeah. along oh, well. the, here? So I made a leather hinge. So what would Enrico think of this now, that he could sit in this form of glory? I guess he'd be amazed, really. Yeah, yeah I'd like to think he'd be pretty chuffed. Yes. We're going to keep sort of family records in it and stuff. Oh, so that's a lovely idea. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. You're very, very welcome. It was a pleasure and an honour to work on such a <laughs> lovely piece. All right, we'll take it out to Tom's car. Nice one for that, Tom. Thank you. All right. Okay. Cheers, mate. We'll be around in a moment. The trunk means a hell of a lot to me. It's one of the few things I've got from my ancestors. It looks great. It looks better than great. Henry would be proud. Enrico would be proud. Ready to go. Let's right. do it. Take it over. All the hard work is over on the Baratheon renovation, and Dom is finally at the stage where they can put it through its paces. Is this watertight? Fingers crossed, it should be. Food historian Kathy Gilder has come to give Dom and Jay a hand at good old fashioned butter making. Hello, Kathy. Hello. To me, that looks like milk. It's cream. It's cream. It's cream. So you would separate right. the cream, which is the fatty bit at the top of the milk, yeah. from the milk. Milk goes somewhere else to make yeah. other things. Yeah. Cream is going to be for your butter. So how long does the process take? Anything from 10, 20 minutes oh, cool. to two hours. Excuse me? Of, two hours? of spinning of this? Of spinning round, yeah. What, two hours wow. of spinning? Yeah. Let's hope it's not leaking then, otherwise we're going to have a big mess. <laughs> that is proper cream, isn't it? It's nice and thick. That's looking good. No leaks. And you can hear the slosh. Yeah. When it starts to turn, yeah. the slosh will diminish. So you it's know that thicker, the fat so is going to coagulate and you'll get the fat solid, or the mass, separating from the liquid or the buttermilk. It's all right, actually. There's no leaks It's no. All. It's, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Did mess enough? Well, well, have a look. Can we have a look? Is it? Have a look. Yeah. Okay, so oh, wow. <laughs> That's butter. Look at that. Look at We're nearly there. Okay. You just need to agitate it some more on the inside. Really quick, like yeah. that, yeah? <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> this is tough. It's a good workout, isn't it? This is a proper workout. Keep going. So you can see it changing now, can't yeah, you? Yeah, even I can see it's changing, actually. Really? You're nearly there. Yeah, it is, it is. I thought you were just telling me that. <laughs> Keep it going. Can I'll you hear it? Scrambled egg I now, can yeah. hear it. Excellent. Look at is that. that. Oh my. Oh, there what? we are. Look at that. Now that is proper butter. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's great. Guys, you've got to taste this. This is we made butter. Oh, you've been taking your time. Oh, it's <laughs> ready with the bread. But looking forward to this. That's what I like. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well done. I've never had butter like that. No, no, it's it good. tastes different. It's okay. completely mm. different. It's absolutely gorgeous. This butter churn holds fond memories for Carolyn, who was taught to make butter by her beloved grandmother nearly 50 years ago. It's not worth a lot to, to anybody out there in the big world, but for me it's worth memories, stories. I can hand it down to my children, I can tell my children their stories. I'm nervous for you because I know how much it means to you. Hello. How are you doing, mate? You all right? So what are you expecting to see? I'm just expecting to go back in time and seeing this amazing butter churn that I had when I was about five, 
absolutely amazing, isn't it? I was like, this big. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what this young man's done for you. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, my God! Wow. <laughs> oh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, God. That is absolutely fantastic. It's not what I was expecting at all. That is unbelievable. That is wow. amazing. So all of this, do you remember, you, we couldn't oh, read yeah, it? You, just, it was just, you couldn't out. even read it out. No. Thank you God. so much. Absolutely You're fantastic. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to cry, but oh, my God. As you remember. It's better. It's a lot better than I remember, well done, but it's well just done. amazing. Well, well, I didn't even know what to expect. But you couldn't read this, you couldn't read that, you couldn't see yeah, this. Detail, yeah. that's didn't even turn. It actually works. <laughs> we made some yeah. butter. <laughs> now, really, I'm not joking with you. Oh, look you're joking. Look, we've got these are yours, if I remember rightly. Oh, yeah, they yeah, are, yeah. yeah. That's yours as well. That's just how it was. Yeah, fantastic. That is amazing. So all in there is where that butter's come from. Incredible. I can't believe that you've done this. It, it is just far in excess of my expectations. Granny will be so proud. Yeah, she'll be looking down, smiling to herself, going, up. Oh, she's got some work to do now. <laughs> <laughs> It's nothing like I expected at all. It's better, bigger, more just overwhelming. It's yeah. great to see what it would have looked like all those years ago, and it must yeah. be, what, 150, 160 years yeah, old? Yeah, easily now. And to see the butter, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that they made butter out of it. <laughs>